Recently here in Britain there was a brief boost for the professional victim industry when it was revealed that Muslims suffer greater job discrimination than any minority group. However, the joy was short-lived when the report made it clear that this has nothing to do with skin colour or race. Hindus, for example, don't seem to have the same problem. Now, why this should be, well, <laughs> I can only guess. Uh, maybe it's because Hindus are not as likely to cause trouble in the workplace, to demand special treatment and to call people racists if they object. Uh, I don't know, I'm just floating that as an idea. It's the first one that came to mind, for some reason. One good thing about this piece of news is that at least now the Muslim activists who obsessively record every critical opinion as a hate crime won't need to cook up a bunch of phony statistics for the media to swallow and regurgitate whole, which will make a nice change for them, because in fairness there does appear to have been some discrimination. However, we shouldn't assume that that always derives from intolerance and prejudice as opposed to, say, prudent judgment based on observation and experience. The fact is that in Britain today there is a perception that it's more risky to employ a Muslim because Muslims are more likely to cause trouble by demanding special treatment and kicking up a fuss if they don't get it. And this perception has arisen not through intolerance or prejudice or racism, but because in the past too many Muslims have made a nuisance of their religion in the workplace and people have become wary. People know that Muslims are more likely to want to dress inappropriately for the job or to refuse to do part of the job on religious grounds and they're more likely to take you to a tribunal if you don't cooperate. And nobody needs that kind of trouble, especially not a small company that could be financially crippled by an expensive lawsuit. That's why the Muslim unemployment rate is high. There's no mystery about it and there's no phobia involved. In fact, it was inevitable that this should be the case. If you have two equally qualified candidates, but one wants special treatment and the other doesn't, who are you going to hire? The person who wants to make the workplace all about their religion, or the person who just wants to get on with the job? That's a tough one, isn't it? Also, there's a perception, whether rightly or wrongly, that if you interview a Muslim for a job, you've got more chance of being taken to the cleaners for not hiring them. And this has arisen because of absurdities like the well-publicised case a few years ago when a Muslim woman was turned down for a job in a hairdressing salon because she insisted on wearing a headscarf to work and not showing her own hair, which is an essential part of the job. She went to a tribunal and was awarded £4,000 for hurt feelings, which almost put the salon out of business. £4,000 compensation for not getting a job for which you've made yourself deliberately unsuitable. Nice work, if you can get it. But this kind of thing only happens in the first place because we have gone out of our way to encourage Muslims to believe that their religion should take precedence over everything in our society. And that's why only Islam can produce a woman who has the nerve to insist on teaching children while wearing a face mask. Or a nurse who will leave an elderly woman to die on a hospital trolley because he's too busy praying. Or hospital staff who won't follow simple hygiene rules because it offends their modesty. And every so often we hear about a supposedly devout Muslim checkout worker in a supermarket who decides to inconvenience everyone by refusing to handle alcohol or pork, when a truly devout Muslim wouldn't even be working for the kuffar in the first place because it's haram. And they know it's haram, but they ignore that fact for money. They've got the cheek to expect everyone else to take their religion seriously when they won't even do it themselves. But my personal favourite Islamic piss take has got to be praying at work. That's a real peach. Before Islam arrived in Britain and started shoving itself into everyone's face and calling us racists if we objected, anyone who suggested putting a prayer room in a place of work would have been openly regarded as a crank. They should still be regarded that way. If you have to pray while you're at work, you are a crank. You are an attention-seeking eccentric. You've got something wrong with you, and you should see a psychiatrist. You don't deserve respect, you deserve ridicule, and you're nothing but a bloody nuisance to everyone around you. While you're down there with your head on the floor and your ass in the air, everyone else is rolling their eyes behind your back. They all think you're a self-indulgent, superstitious plonker, but nobody says anything because they don't want to be falsely accused of racism and maybe lose their job. Praying at work indeed. What's next? Sacrificing a sheep at the end of Ramadan? Will that be in the workplace soon, I wonder? 
I know, let's open this out and make it more inclusive. It's good to be inclusive. Let's encourage juju rituals in the workplace and, and rain dances. Let's invite people to bring voodoo dolls and shrunken heads to work for the sake of diversity. What do you mean there are no headhunters in Britain? Well, why have we excluded them? I thought all cultures were equal. What are we, racists? Oh yeah, we are, aren't we? I nearly forgot. It's very simple, folks. The Muslim unemployment rate will fall when Muslims start showing a bit more respect for the society that they have chosen to live in and stop behaving as if they and their religion are entitled to special treatment at everyone else's expense. There's no mystery about it, there's no phobia involved, and it's not even slightly racist, it's just plain common sense.